Shalom, first and foremost, I want to give all praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahav Rakak, Wadash, and the Holy Spirit. Um, it's the Brother Monica Come coming at you with another video for this week. And um, second of all, I want to give double honor to the Apostles of Great Millstone and salute to the Akim out there. It's pushing this truth in all sincerity and even unto those that's learning and listening and watching and growing thereby in the, in the spirit of this truth. All right, so um, I want to do this article here because I, I kind of find it interesting. And um, as I've just read the article before recording the video, you know, this article pretty much goes into people claiming that the coronavirus is connecting with prophecy, you know, which they're partially correct on that. But, um, <clears throat> you know, they go off on a couple of things, and I'm going to explain the reason as to why. So, um, let's just get right into this. It says, uh, Coronavirus Prophecy, Bezir claim four horsemen of the apocalypse have arrived. And I believe they're referring to the horses spoken up in the book of Revelations, the sixth chapter, which I'll go into later on. But let me get into this article first. It says, uh, Coronavirus has infected more than 94,000 people around the globe, leading many to bizarre claims COVID-19 was predicted by the Bible. Why are people claiming the four horsemen of the apocalypse have arrived? So let's read on down. It says, The world is in the grips of a coronavirus epidemic unlike anything seen since the outbreak of SARS in 2002. The coronavirus disease COVID-19 has infected 94,214 people since the last December. Excuse me, since last December and killed at least 3,214 people. All right, it says uh, the virus which first appeared in China's Hubei province is now rapidly spreading through Europe and the Middle East at alarming rates. Uh, large outbreaks of COVID-19 in Italy, Iran, and South Korea have prompted many to link the epidemic to biblical prophecies of the end times. Militant Christians and biblical hardliners have flooded social media with claims the coronavirus is a harbinger of the apocalypse. And, you know, they're going off on that because the coronavirus is not going to bring i mean the coronavirus could could actually i mean if it gets out of control it, it, it can bring the end of the of this world all right but the, the point i'm making is is, is is that this virus is not the end or be all end of the world prophecy the end the, the uh the end or be all end of the world prophecy is the microchip all right and i have to put it out there because according to the book of revelations the 13th chapter um <clears throat> That's the last prophecies of a more is, is 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 the beast system coming in effect. Now this coronavirus can lead up to the chip being mandated. In order for you to be vaccinated, you gotta get a chip. They could do that. All right, but the coronavirus is not the end or be all prophecy. The chip is. Now what I want to do is, is I want to read Revelations the sixth chapter. And this is what these um, so-called proclaimed, you know, Christians are saying of the four horsemen. And it has all to do with um, the coronavirus, which it doesn't. I mean, they're partially correct, but most of it, they're wrong of what they say anyway. This is this is uh, Revelation 6 um, verse. Let me see where I can read. I can start from. All right. Yeah, this is uh, re I'll start in verse three. Revelation 6 and verse three. When he had opened this, the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. In other words, the angel. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now, what group of people was given the blessing of the sword? We know... Esau, which was just one man at the time, <clears throat> during the time of, um, what is it, when Isaac and Rebekah 
where they're also, you know, during the time of uh, Jacob and Esau, when they were both growing up and came of age, Jacob got his blessing and Esau had also got his blessing from Isaac. And Isaac blessed Esau with the sword, according to the book of Genesis uh, chapter, what is it, 27. I got it right there. And I believe it's the 34th verse. And um, I want to read another, I want to read another scripture too. Something of what Job was saying, just to connect with what I'm reading already in Revelation the 6th chapter. Before I even go to um, Genesis 27. So let's get Job 9. Verse 24, Job 9 and 24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, and he covereth the faces of the judges thereof, and if not, where and who is he? So it's quite clear that in the last days, as we're living in right now, there would be a group of people that will come out of the, a wicked root, which they will come out of the, the lineage of Esau, and they will begin to rule wickedly. Because they are the wicked according to book of Malachi 1 verse 4. So let's get that. Malachi 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and... The people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So when we read the book of Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. In other words, the so-called white man. All right, because they are the people of the they are the people that represent Esau, that represent Esau, which Esau or the Edomites are a wicked people according to the Bible and according to the deeds and their actions, which the Bible prophesied that they would do wicked deeds anyway so let's go all the way back to revelation 6 and we're going to start from verse 4 again and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and why was the horse red because the, the red horse symbolized or represented a group of people that are called edom which the term edom is a hebrew word from the hebrew word adawam which means red so the red people would begin to rule the earth. And, and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. And they that should kill one another. So they would take peace from the earth. Alright. So according to the book of um, Job 9 and 24. It says the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. The wicked is going to wrought just that. Wickedness. Okay. The wicked are going to work odious works on the planet. And therefore also take peace from the earth. Okay. By the what? The great sword that they was blessed with. So I want to read this one last time. And then I want to read uh, Genesis 27. Just to recap my train of thought. And um, go, you know, read the whole verse. Uh, Revelation 6 verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. So let's read um, Genesis 27. And then we're going to read verse. We're going to start with. Uh, Verse 40. This is Genesis 27, verse 40. And I'll stop in verse 29. Genesis 27, verse 39. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So let's focus on this right here. And by thy sword thou shalt live. So that was the blessing that Isaac <clears throat> prophesied. That was the blessing that um, Isaac gave unto Esau. That he will begin to rule with the sword. Okay. 
So now we're going to go and read Revelation 6 and 4 again. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. Exactly, because when you look up the term sword in the Hebrew, the, the word sword in the Hebrew is karab, which means to lay waste. And that's exactly what Esau specializes in. He specializes in wrath, weapons of mass destruction, viruses, etc. All right, because the sword doesn't necessarily have to mean a literal sword or, you know, missiles or Gatling guns or whatever kind of weaponry that's destructive. But it can also be viruses. Well, I mean... That's also a destructive weapon to use. This is why you have a term called, all right, you have a term called bio warfare, all right. So Esau don't have to just kill you with guns and and um, missiles and weapons of, of of you know that that can cause explosion, but he can also get you with viruses. And there's and there's um so many articles that speak on viruses being man made. And there's books on this stuff as well. Okay. So that's Esau's blessing as well. By creating these viruses. And the main virus at hand. The current one at hand is the coronavirus. Currently speaking. So we're going to break this thing down. We're going to break the four horsemen thing down. So let's read verse 5. It says. And when he had opened the third seal. I heard the third beast say. Come and see. And I beheld and lower black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands, which, which represents slavery, okay, or bondage, or, the, uh, or burden. So we're going to look up the word balances in Revelation 6 verse 5. So the word zugas means a yoke, a yoke that is put on drought cattle, metaphor, used of any burden or bondage as that of slavery. Okay. A palance bear pair of scales, which they're going off on that. You know, these are the four usages that are correct. All right. So. That's what it means. It just simply means slavery. Now we're going to read some more on this. It says, uh, let's read Revelation 6, verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Let's read all, let's go all the way down here. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four beasts say, Come and see. Verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, the pale horse goes all the way back to things or plagues that's mentioned in the book of uh, Second Ezra 15 and 16. But I'm going to read Second uh, Ezra 16, and I want to just get to the point in verse. Uh, I'll stop in verse. You might, you know what? I'll stop in verse one. It says, "Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia! Woe be unto thee, Egypt! 